Hello everyone, here we are to discuss about the morphology of tooth and this video will discuss the anterior tooth that is the maxillary and mandibular incisors and canine. So all the tooth we will be discussing in a similar fashion that is we will do it into crown or root and the crown we will discuss it into labular buccal, lingual, mesial, distal and incisal or the occlusal surfaces and each of the surface we will discuss its shape crown outline, surface, height of contour. Crown outline itself we can divide into many. For example, the labial surface we can divide into the mesial crown outline, the distal crown outline, incisal and cervical crown outline. And for proximal we can divide into labial, lingual and cervical crown outlines. So before I start the explanation, let me give you a warning. Do not try by hearting morphology because that's going to get a little bit nasty. So we would suggest you that first you try to understand this, for which I hope this video will be helpful. And then the diagram. The diagram is very important because that's going to stand out better than what you write. And then after that, you have to know all the headings that we just mentioned in the chart before. So once you have the headings in your head, all you have to do is just fill in the content with what you understood. And this will make things much simpler. Beginning with the maxillary central incisors. We will begin with the labial aspect. It is trapezoidal in shape. With the crown outline, the mesial outline is relatively straight with the mesoincisal angle sharp and the mesial contact area is at the incisal third of the crown. Next to the distal outline, the distoincisal angle is rounded and the distal contact area is at the junction of the incisal and middle third of crown. Next with the incisal outline, it is usually regular and straight mesiodistally and the cervical outline is semicircular with the curvature towards the root. Next with the labial surface as such, now the surface is convex and smooth cervicoincisally and mesiodistally. Now with the lingual aspect, it is very similar to the labial aspect except for the lingual surface which uh, as you can see converges lingually and the lingual surface as such is very irregular with convexities as well as concavities. Now the convexity is the cingulum which is located at the cervical third of the crown and the concavity is the M shaped lingual fossa which is located in the incisal and middle third of crown. It also has two to three developmental grooves running into the cingulum. Next is the mesial aspect. It is triangular or wedge shaped. Now with the crown outline, the labial outline is convex and the lingual outline is concave or convex. The incisal outline, the incisal ridge is in line with the vertical root axis and the cervical outline curves incisally up to 3 to 4 mm. Next with the mesial surface. The mesial surface is convex labiolingually and cervicoincisally with less convexity at the cervical area and the mesial contact area is at the incisal third of the crown. The height of contour is at the cervical third of the crown, both labial and lingual. Now with the distal aspect, it is very similar to that of the mesial aspect except for minor difference. That is the incisal outline, the incisal edge slopes lingually and the cervical outline, the uh, it slope shorter than that of the mesial surface. And uh, the distal surface, uh, it appears thicker towards the incisal third of the crown. And the distal contact area is located at the junction of the incisal and middle third of the crown. Now heading towards the incisal aspect, it is triangular in shape with the base towards the labial surface and apex towards the cingulum and labially it is broad and convex and lingually the cingulum is seen. It is wider mesiodistally than labiolingually and the incisal edge is at right angle to a line bisecting the tooth labiolingually. The incisal surface appears very bulky and the mesioincisal angle is sharp while the distoincisal angle is rounded. And now finally with the root surface, it is usually conical in form which is evenly tapering towards the apex. In cross section it appears triangular with rounded borders. It is single in number and is 2 to 3 mm longer than the crown and at the apex it is uh, blunt in nature and the curvature is usually straight without any tilt. Next is the maxillary lateral incisors. They are very similar to that of the central incisors. So let's not repeat the whole thing again. Let's just focus on the differences. 
So, the laterals are smaller in all dimension than the central incisors. The labial surface is more convex than that of the central incisors and the contact areas are more cervically placed with the mesial contact area at the junction between the incisal and middle third and the distal contact area at the middle of the middle third of the crown. Now, the incisal edge is rounded or curved with rounded angles and the distal incisal angle is more rounded than the mesial incisal angle. Both the mesial and distal outlines are convex, but the distal outline is more convex than the mesial outline. Now heading towards the lingual aspect. The lingual fossa of the lateral incisor is more deep than the central and it is inverted V in shape compared to the M shaped lingual fossa of the central incisors. The cingulum is narrower and the marginal ridge cingulum, uh, lingual fossa all are more prominent than the maxillary central incisors. And finally the apex of the root has got a slight distal tilt to it. Next is the mandibular incisors. Both central and lateral incisors have nearly the same features. So the difference from the maxillary incisors is that these are relatively smaller in size and the mesial and distal surface are relatively straighter and the contact areas of mesial and distal sides are located incisally almost at the same level. The mesial incisal angle and distal incisal angle are sharper. Coming to the lingual side, the features are less prominent, that is the cingulum, fossa, pits and fissures are all less prominent. And the labial surface is inclined lingually, so the incisal edge is located lingual to the midline. And the crown is wider labiolingually than mesiodistally. Next with the maxillary permanent canine, we will begin with the labial aspect. The crown is pentagonal in shape. The crown outline, the mesial outline is convex with the contact area at the junction of incisal and middle third of crown and the distal outline is more convex with the contact area at the middle of middle third of the crown. The incisal outline is formed by two slopes that is the mesial cusp slope and the distal cusp slope. The mesial cusp slope is shorter and concave while the distal is longer and rounded. It has a single well developed cusp with pointed cusp tip. And the cervical outline curves apically. Now about the labial surface, it is formed by a labial ridge which is the well developed middle labial loop running from cervix to the cusp tip. It is smooth and convex in nature and on either side of the labial ridge shallow depressions are present. Now with the lingual aspect, it is very similar to the labial aspect but the cervical outline is more convex and the lingual convergence is more marked. And the cingulum is large and well developed and strongly developed marginal ridges are present and the lingual force they divide into mesial and distal part by lingual ridge. So next is the mesial aspect. It is triangular or wedge shaped with the crown outline. Labial crown outline is convex and the lingual is concave or convex or S shaped. The incisal outline forms a small arc at the cusp tip. The cervical outline is convex pointing towards the cusp tip. Now about the mesial surface, the crown is bulkier labiolingually and is thicker at the incisal portion than the incisors and it is convex except for a small concavity in the cervical portion. The mesial contact area is located at the junction of incisal and middle third of the crown and is centered labiolingually and the height of contour is located at the cervical third of crown. Now the distal aspect, it is very similar to the mesial aspect except that the cervical outline is less curved and there is more concavity apical to the distal contact area and the distal contact area is located at the middle of the middle third of crown. Now with the incisal aspect, it is diamond shaped. Labially it is convex and the labial ridge is very prominent. Lingually the cingulum marginal ridges lingual ridge, lingual fossa are all seen. It is wider labiolingually than mesiodistally. Uh, the cusp tip is located labial to the crown center labiolingually and mesial to the crown center mesiodistally. It is asymmetrical in nature with the distal half larger than the mesial half of crown. The cusp ridge forms a straight line mesiodistally which bisects the contact area and the mesial contact area is broader and the distal contact area is shorter and stretched to make contact with the first permanent premolar. 
Now finally with the root surface, canine has the largest root in the whole dentition and it is wider labiolingually than mesiodistally, it is conical in form. Now in cross section it has an oval shape and the apex of the root is blunt in nature. They have a distal tilt at the apical third of the root and have depre developmental depression in both mesial and distal aspects of the root with the one on the distal aspect being more deeper than the mesial aspect. Now to the final tooth of this video, the mandibular canine. Now they are longer and narrower than the maxillary canine and they have relatively straight mesial and distal outlines. The cusp of this canine is less sharp and the mesial and distal contact areas are located at the same level in sicily and the mesial slope is much shorter than the distal slope and the labial ridge is also less prominent coming to the lingual side it is relatively more smooth with the less prominent cingulum lingual ridge lingual fossa and ridges and the cingulum is placed more distally and the cusp tip is located lingual to the midline so thus we come to an end of this video Hope this video benefits all of you. For more such videos, follow us on our YouTube channel Guidant PSMDC and our Instagram page Guidant.